all throughout the region. Dr. Rose finds the same symbols he saw at Gebekli, now brought into the home 2,000 years later. What do you think the significance of having this inside the house is? The bull is obviously this incredibly important symbol to them, whether it represents a specific deity, a specific god, or is symbolic for sort of, you know, something deeper in terms of ritual. This is a small reproduction. Prehistoric wild cattle called aurochs would have stood over two meters tall at the shoulder, with horns spanning three meters. These are large, scary, killing beasts. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, to, to bring that power, that violence and domesticate it in here, it's a celebration of the hunt and the prowess of the individuals. And we think today still of the bullfights in Iberia. Think of the prowess and, and the honor associated with that. There's a real pragmatic and, and very reasonable fear of, of such a, a huge beast. The awe and respect we have for these powerful beasts and our desire to conquer them is still with us to this day. This depiction of burial rites is another intriguing image Dr. Rose finds here, 2,000 years on from Gebekli Tepe. It looks at first like the deceased have been left out to be consumed by vultures. We now appreciate from excavations of hundreds of, of burials that these characters were, were buried fully fleshed. People have gone back and re-excavated the dead. And then they very carefully removed the skulls. The skull cult is associated with ancestor worship. A person's skull is a physical reminder of them. Once removed from the body, it's displayed alone or with other skulls in a house or communal space. This is a way of bringing back to life an important person in order to keep alive a history that binds people together. It's a resurrection of, of a particular character who's very important to this particular lineage. Dr. Rose realizes that the headless man of Gobekli Tepe could represent a very early expression of the resurrection idea, in which a deceased person or deity is brought back from the dead, uniting a people in a common cause or belief. Over the following millennia, this resurrection idea turns up in the religions of many civilizations, including Babylon, Egypt, India, and Greece. It survives to this day in the Christian faith. Dr. Rose now understands that although the ancient temple disappears, the beliefs it represents have continued to shape our culture for 12,000 years. We might never fully understand what went on at Quebecli Tepe, but from the clues I've gathered on this trip, some things have become clear. The construction of that temple represents the culmination of a long tradition of thought and craftsmanship that must extend back into the last ice age. It was a social nexus that brought communities together from far and wide. And most importantly, it represents a quantum leap in our spiritual expression. Instead of being just part of the natural world, we began to see ourselves as masters of it. By creating a temple for those giant stone deities fashioned in our image, we opened a portal to a new way of life. It was there, under those towering pillars, that we gave birth to the gods. Gobekli Tepe marks what is possibly the greatest turning point in our cultural evolution. A point when people began to form large communities began to re-evaluate their place in the world and began to domesticate plants and animals, the first giant step out of the Stone Age towards the Space Age. Delve into the mysteries of Britain's brutal past in Tony Robinson's Superstitions, brand new next Tuesday at 9. Stay tuned for the latest air crash investigation.